Hi friends, my name is Rena, and welcome back to my channel. I am going into my final year of computer science, so I thought that this would be a great time to share five things that I wish I knew before studying computer science. First of all, I really wish I took my classes more seriously. I know that sounds pretty obvious. University classes is a lot harder than high school classes, and if you're in computer science, it is hard. It is a hard degree. I would really recommend going to as many classes as possible, following up with teachers after the class while the material is fresh, going to office hours, discussing the material actively with your peers and classmates, and doing a lot of practice problems, practice exams. I wish I could go back and dedicate way more time to my computer science classes from about five to 10 hours a week per class for the more difficult courses. Second thing is understanding the importance of debugging. When I ran into my first bugs in my first assignments, I was so frustrated i just wanted you know my smart friend or the ta or the professor to solve this bug so i could just get on with the rest of the assignment but what i didn't understand was how important debugging is to coding overall debugging is a huge part of coding so when you learn how to debug you're actually really learning how to code. So take debugging seriously. It is a skill, not something that you should just get out of the way. This includes learning different types of debugging from the simple but effective print statements to log statements, to building test cases and so on and so forth. And of course, learning how to persevere even though you're getting a million different bugs. Third, being able to trust yourself and learn how to think on your own. When I started my first years in computer science, I had major imposter syndrome. I was always relying on, you know, the smarter or more technical friend to help me or save the day. I was scared of thinking on my own. I was like, no way the way I'm thinking is right. There's probably a better way. There's probably a more efficient way. And I was very dependent on how other people would solve the assignment or the same question as me. I also only thought there was like one way to solve a problem and it was definitely not my way. When I learned that there's multiple ways of solving a problem and that's a skill to be able to think of different ways to solve a problem actually. Maybe my actual coding or syntax wasn't as advanced or skillful. I still knew how to problem solve. I still knew how to think. And those are things that I could have just trusted myself more in. This this includes investing time to actually sit down and think about the problem without even coding. Number four, I wish I started to build my portfolio right away from first year university. While I'm grateful my computer science courses had a degree of practical coding classes, there was a lot of theoretical classes. So that means that you need to spend a good amount of time outside of the classroom actually building your projects, your portfolio. I actually didn't learn how to build a website in a course until my third year of computer science. And at that point, you're almost done your undergrad. So you wanna make sure that you're actually spending time outside of the classroom right away in first year, learning those things on your own. Another way you can do this is fleshing out your hackathon projects. So I actually did, and I'm super grateful that I did, start going to hackathons right away in my first year university. I loved it. So I kind of just spent you know, the one weekend grinding it out and it was good enough to demo by the end of the weekend, but I wouldn't say they were good enough to put on my portfolio or if an interview where it was grilling me on the project, I would be able to have elaborate technical answers prepared. So if you have some good hackathon projects, continue them, flesh them out, elaborate them so that they are ready to be on your portfolio and that you are ready to talk about them in an interview if asked. Fifth and finally, interview prep way earlier and consistently. You will not be able to cram leak code interview prep in a week, in two weeks. For some jobs, you are actually probably able to cram successfully. You know how to, maybe certain behavioral interviews, but for technical software engineering interviews, you will not be able to. I made the mistake of doing that so many recruitment cycles. I personally follow Neat Code 150. I love it. I love Neat Code's videos. I love the layout of his questions. And I also really like the road 
roadmap that you can follow, which tells you an order of the questions that you should do them in. I also created and used my own tracker on Notion. For every question that I do, I'll write a few sentences on how I solved it. I'll have the time and space complexity, as well as how long it took me, when I did it, so I can just keep track of my progress. And I'll often redo questions that I'll look back and say, I used the video solution to do this. I didn't solve it on my own and just keep resolving it at iterations so that eventually I'll be able to do on my own intuitively or, you know, by memory. I would recommend three to even up to six months of leak code prep ahead of interviewing season and being able to dedicate time to do one to two every single day. That wraps up five things I wish I knew before studying computer science. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you give it a like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.